Um, next we're going to hear from Eric Fredrickson. Eric is a young man who has been in long-term recovery and he's advocating for people struggling with addiction. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I never would have thought that I would be up here uh, working with people who I thought were working against me for many years of my life. Um, what it took me a long time to figure out is they were working for me before I realized that. Um, I'm coming up on 10 years of being clean and sober. Um, I was right in the I'll just give you a second. I, I watched over 30 of my friends die. That's a conservative number. I stopped counting. Um, I know exactly what the, the beast of addiction is like. And it's all I do now is work with people in recovery. Oh, it's a great privilege and it brings a lot of life to me. It was 10 years ago though, when I got arrested for the last time. And of course, in my mind, jail time was not going to help me at all. It was exactly what I needed, though. And I can stand here and go way past my time and tell you a lot of friends of mine who are now living amazing lives, including running treatment centers and helping many people in addiction, who going to jail was the best thing that ever happened to them. I'm absolutely for people that need treatment. I work in the treatment world right now. In my, when I'm not spending time with my beautiful wife, who is a gift, and my two amazing sons. I'm spending all my time with people in addiction. And I'm here right now to tell you the person out there that's stealing from their family, that's going begging money for their next eye, can't keep a needle out of their arm, they need to understand there's consequences for their actions. No, they're not the ones that are gonna tell you that, trust me. They need to know, no, this behavior is not okay. They need to at least be presented with the choice. You have consequences for your actions, or you can get help. I have yet, and I've been on both sides, <laughs> I have yet to find a judge or a court system that doesn't do everything, I have yet to find one anywhere that doesn't do everything they can to help the person that they can tell is serious about wanting to change. I've yet to meet one. I've also yet to meet one that says you don't want to change, then you need to deal with your consequences. My question would be, is Ohio punishing people or are they just choosing that? I understand, I understand the cycle of addiction very well, but there needs to be a moment where they say, if I'm gonna to choose to do this, these are gonna be the consequences for my actions. It was about a, uh, two weeks ago, my friend called me, who's a pharmacist here in Ohio for 25 years now, and we worked together trying to help some people. And he told me about this, this issue coming up, and I was, I was shocked over the phone. I said, wait, what? And he explained it to me after talking to a friend of his who works for the Ohio State Troopers. He explained everything to me and I said, I think some people are missing the boat on this. That's not gonna help addicts get clean. And I, I, I do believe that Ohio, um, in this little region of America, is ground zero for this problem. And the thought of what could happen for distribution and production with, those, with that leniency, that should wake some people up. That should wake some people up to get active and know against this. I'm gonna end with this. Um, the biggest thing that changed my life was me surrendering to the fact that I couldn't do it and I needed help. On top of needing help, I said to myself, I definitely need God in the middle of all this. And I just want to remind people, that right now in Ohio is, is really all hands on deck. The communities, the courts, the law enforcement. Um, it's a call to action, really. A, we, we need to get involved. All of us need to get involved. And now more than ever, mothers who have lost children, children who are growing up with parents who are choosing the needle over them, we need to make sure that we are letting people know there's hope. Yes, there's, there's more hope than you think. And they need to know more than ever, and everyone who's been touched by this, and I think it's safe to say pretty much everybody has been touched by it in some way, shape, or form. 
I just want to end by reminding people of Ohio State motto, and that's this. With God, all things are possible. And more than anything, what if this is an opportunity in front of Ohio to become a prototype, to see what it looks like to bring real transformation to a, state, to, to a, to a country that is definitely in need of it? Thanks.